Tina koto koto e wakarongo mai nei ki te nei o ngā hotaka o koni a ikorero o tira ki koto ra e mata ki taki mai nei a ki runga i a puka mata i te nei papa o mata ora a ko te aurangi Dylan te nei e me i koa tu ki koto katoa a o tira ki koto ra e hono mai ana i te iHeart Radio te wai ko te rorane ana ko ngā me i mata kui kui a ki koto hoki ana me na te te mata ki taki mai nei koto ki runga i a poka mata kei te ki te koto kei wa a ko wai kei taku taa i te nei wa ai ra i te fano hashtag in t m um, don't ask us what it's about, Fano. Just know it's a hashtag that matters. It's a iwi. We are missing. We are missing one of the the hashtag creator actually, Tans Mikaire, but she's busy um, writing something or other that's really important right now. So uh, you are just dealing with those of us who are uri from Taranaki, which is probably enough for you all right now. Anyway, Anareira. <laughs> Hey tiki te koutou ko wai kei takutaa, ko takutua kana tēnei, uh, Eri Mako. Uh, I'm giving her an introduction myself tonight, as per her orders. Uh, nā reira, ko ia te tamaiti tuarima o te whānau mako, uh, te kaiha kina kina o ngā kaiha kina kina o uh, ngā uri wakatipu o David Rao ko Irene Mako. And this is what you get when you let me introduce you. Um, she's also a very good singer. Uh, she was like, hey, she just debuted on Breakfast TV just last week too, Etifana. I'll just chuck that one in there for all of you. Um, what can I say? Never to be asked again, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Here we go. Here she is, Etifana. Who is it? It is the one and the only Eddie Mako. Ana reira, inaene, katuku te rākau ki koe e māni. A uh, ki te waka moho atu ki te maria e whakarongo mai nei. Ko wai koe, no hea, aua āhua tanga katoa. Tēnā tātou e hui hui mai nei i tēnei ata, uh, me ki, uh, me, me ngā āhua tanga o te marama, um, tēnei marama e whakanuia i tō tātou reo Māori i tēnei wiki, te wiki, te wiki o te reo Māori, uh, e mihi kau atu ana uh, kia tātou e hapai nei, e ako nei, e whai nei i tō tātou reo rangatira. Uh, ko wai tēnei, ko au te tehi mokopono o te maunga tītō hea, uh, ko Ngāti Mutunga toku nei iwi, uh, ko Māni Reinfeld Zahau, um, kei te nuho au i tēnei wā, kei waitara, uh, uh, kei wainganui i taku whānau, uh, nō reira, e mihi, e mihi, um, Aroha kia tātou nei. Kia ora. Kia ora. <laughs> Tēnā koe māns, ana ki a koe e hine nui. Tēnā nō tātou te oanau, uh, tēnei te me i atu ki a koutou katoa. Um, koe tēnei, he mokopuna hoki o te maunga, he mokopuna hoki o uh, te maunga pūtau aki, he uri o uh, ngā te awa, te a te awa taranaki tūturu. Uh, ko hine nui wano Bryant tōku ingoa. Ai, kei Taranaki au e noho ana hoki, kei ngā motu au i tēnei wā, ki te saho o tōku tamaiti, a Corbin, tēnā no tātou. Tēnā tātou katoa. So yes, here you have it, I te whānau. Well, look, look at me. I've, man, I've managed to gather a panel, mm. a panel for this pāpāho. So you must be thinking it's got to be big, right, e te whānau. Ai rā, kei te tika ngā kōrero a māni rau ko hine nui, kei te waka nui mātou i te wiki o te reo Māori, uh, o tēnei a marama hoki ne, ma, mahuru Māori, ai kei te waka nui hoki mātou i tau a kaupapa nui o te wā. Uh, and quite the uh, controversial start, in a sense, hasn't it been, wahine mā? Um, and I don't think it, the intent was it for ever to be controversial. And, and I don't actually think it needed to get here or end up this way. Uh, yeah. However, um, yes, it has. So people out there may be thinking, okay, well, what's she talking about? So uh, <laughs> you may, <laughs> you may, I, I guess, you know, if you live a part of your life on the internet, you would 
not have been able to escape the pressing topic at this time. Uh, and, and a good topic, and a topic that probably needs to be explored and talked about a little more. Uh, and so in, in regards to this specific topic that we're going to talk about tonight, um, it's not necessarily about personalities or, or the people who are involved. Uh, however, a, uh, a album has been released, uh, dubbed the uh, a mini album in Te Reo Māori, uh, by artist Lord, and she's been supported by, by some awesome as uh, Reo Māori acti- uh, advocates uh, yeah. and uh, qualified top notch interpreters uh, who have jumped on board with her to release her album uh, in, in time for Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori, in line with the Waiata Anthems uh, project, which I have promoted. Uh, since it began, have really enjoyed listening to, especially our Māori artists who've had the opportunity to uh, translate some of the or oh, whakawhiti ki te reo Māori mo etahi a o a rātou uh, waiata. And so, for some reason, this this particular mini album just invoked a response. <laughs> it's re- it's invoked a response which some I think have confused as a reaction because uh, there's a difference between uh, response and reaction. And uh, I, I have to say I'm very proud of uh, these wahine who are sitting amongst me right now because they've been able to articulate uh, the response that has come with uh, from within many of us uh, at this point in time who are second language learners uh, of our own reo, our own uh, reo rangatira. We didn't grow up with Te Reo Māori as a first language. It's come to us as a second language over time, and we're all still learning Te Reo Māori, so we feel we have enough experience for it to be knowledge at this point in time. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over um, right now to Hinenui because Hinenui uh, started a response, in a sense, her own response to this album. Um, so Hins, if you can just give us a little bit of a overview of um, firstly of how you responded to the news uh, and then of course what's happened since then. Hmm. <laughs> I think when I first heard it like just the fact that she was part of a collective kaupapa such as the Waiata Anthems which is um, you know featuring different artists and they collaborate on a single album but this was a bit different to that. So it was the first kind of solo venture of its type whereby an artist had done an EP, which is like five or six songs. So she'd done something kind of more along the lines of a solo project. So when I heard it and I heard that it was Lord, my first instincts were, you know, why is she, why is she as a Pākehā woman centering herself in a kaupapa Māori? So this is a kaupapa Māori and she's obviously Pākehā and she's kind of taking centre stage. And whenever I see stuff like that, I'm always like, oh, I don't think my heckles get up, but I'm always kind of like, okay, what's going on here? What, what's happening? Um, and then I wanted to know things like, why is she doing it? Has she had a history of contributing towards te reo revitalization? Is this something that she's interested in? Where are the proceeds for the kaupapa going from? So I just had lots of questions, and I think it's natural to kind of jump on, you know, for us, why he needs to jump on social media and kind of go, um, okay, we're going to critique this, or we're going to quote it all more about this. And it wasn't ever from a position of, um, Katie here, I don't like this. It was just critiquing and wanting to know more and to understand where this had come from. Because you hear names like Timoti Karetu and Hiniwehi Mohi and Hemi Kelly, and you think, oh, you know, people of stature within the community, real community. Um, so you just want to know more. And then to see the types of responses that we've had in terms of when people critique something and then they get a response back. Um, that critiques your critique, but actually it was quite emotional in terms of the responses um, and using words, you know, such as, um, what have you done for the deal? <laughs> um, you're hating, um, you're, you know, you're just being haters. And I just thought, oh, that's kind of dismissive quarter deal because when people have um, scepticism and critique of Pākehā taking centre stage and kaipapa Māori initiatives, 
it's it's normal because of hello colonialism so i didn't like that response as well that we were getting you know it felt like you were getting attacked because you had an opinion and that you don't deserve to have an opinion um so yeah started to write some stuff and i think that over the past few days more more has just come out on it and it's actually been really good i think it's really good to have open corridor and open dialogue it doesn't mean that you are anti something um and i think that narrative's really dismissive of um especially the wahine maori in the discussion um and that we're allowed to have fakaro on this and we're allowed to corridor about it and wananga actually that's a very maori thing to do which is what we're doing tonight and uh, tikato uh so um, oh, I just want to read out what you wrote, one of the pieces that you wrote. Um, so it says, so this is on the back of what Hene Nui's just talked about, Etifano, for those of you who are um, listening in. So this is part two, I think, of, of something else that was written, but it says, also when some of us speak on these issues, it's informed by our lived experience. So we have experienced in your face tokenism, Pākehā hoarding resources and doing the bare minimum at the expense of whānau Māori, them holding positions of power and influence and picking and choosing their pet Māori projects and then slapping a waka eke noa on it. It's nuanced kōrero and it doesn't mean we don't want to be in a relationship with Pākehā or tangata tiriti. I think it means we are learning that maintaining who we are and notions of mana motu ake Rangatiratanga does not mean we need to play nice or say please and thank you for every bit of effort. Uh, I'm going to cross over to you, Iri, just quickly, because after Hinenui wrote that also, you were someone who picked up on that. What was your response to, what's been your response so far and especially to uh, Hinenui's corridor in this sense? Um, well, I'll, I'll say this up front. I'm actually a big Waiata Anthems fan. So I've really enjoyed the Waiata, particularly our Māori artists who have trans had their songs translated into te reo and seen their journey and, and, the, and the others. So And I don't necessarily have a view about Lord's music um, as such. What I, I guess uh, when this all started, what was was quite mumai for me because I'm nearly fifty, and like we discussed before we came on, I I, I am going to go to the grave not being able to have the deal at the level I want it to be, like we talked about earlier. And so what um was mumai for me was the response that people thought because we didn't agree with some of the corridor that was coming out about this, we were haters of te reo. and. And so as as being described as a hater of te reo, and well, Timoti has said this for all you haters. Oh, I'm not going to argue with Timoti Karetu or anybody about that. I, I just needed someone to validate that what I was feeling, the mamai I was feeling about that was okay. I didn't care about anything else. But, you know, none of the deal experts I saw posting or anything like that, or even the real influences. Once, not one of them stopped to think how we. Oh, sorry, probably only one, and we talked about it earlier, money. So you can, you maybe you can talk about that person um, later or explain how we feel about her response for us. But not one of them said these are valid feelings, and they all came from people who I feel have grown up with the deal. It's their first language. And they have not lived the same experience we have. Um, and I think probably I'm probably the oldest in our little dopu here. Um, and, and it's a long journey for me. And I and you know, I, I thought there are gonna be people my age out there who are feeling similar to me. I know it because I know those people. You know, I personally know those people who are gonna think, oh, so now we actually aren't good enough to be promoting the deal either. No one is validating how we feel. And if because we said, hey, wait on a minute, you know, this is, doesn't feel right to me that we're celebrating te reo. I'm celebrating te reo. I see other people saying, what have you done to, you know, promote the deal? What have you done to help revitalize the deal? I've done bloody plenty, mate. <laughs> you know, 
it might not be out in the public like everybody, but I that's all I was wanting. I wanted somebody to say, actually, your trauma is valid, but instead we got the your trauma isn't your identity, isn't our identity. No, it's not, but it doesn't mean it's not there, mate. And at some stage, we're all going to have to agree that there's going to need to be a strategy for people like me um, who need to access the thing. I can't afford, and people say, yes, you can if you really want to, if you really commit to it, you can take a year off work. No, I can't. You know, um, you can get someone to come into your house and tutor you personally. No, I can't. Yes, I have access to a lot of their speakers, but it's my journey which is very different, and I know even from the people in my own whānau. So that's all I was, I felt that was missing until Hine Nui and Mani wrote stuff. And then I was like, ah, yes. And then I saw a whole lot of other people writing things. And I was like, yes, well, they've written what I how I feel. I don't need to write anything, and I probably wouldn't be as articulate with it anyway. But I just felt that that, you know, we were being pitted against each other and for that, I'm going to give it over to Mani because Mani's piece was about that. Yeah. Kia ora. Yeah. Um, it's it's been interesting, eh? And when like the the Waiata and it kind of sort of hit hit. It was actually only um, Hayden, who. Um, piece that she wrote for the spin-off that kind of alerted yes. me to Lords. Um, and that was quite an interesting piece because she acknowledged the um, contributors to the project. And I, I kind of was, was like, hmm, interesting. Um, and there was like, a part of me was like, well, this is kind of cool, um, an internationally renowned artist, yeah. um, you know, promoting our real, um, but there was also there was an uncomfortableness about it, and um, I kind of yeah I'm in a bit of a bit of an observer, a bit of a social scientist, like to observe human behaviour, and I just you know hung out on the socials for a little bit on Twitter and on Insta and on Facebook and just kind of started watching the things, the the conversations coming through about it. Um, yeah, and it was really interesting. There was kind of, uh, you know, lots of celebratory stuff, and then some lots of people were starting to express that sort of discomfort. Um, and then, um, yeah, a few people started publishing stuff, like Greg, Jack Gray, um, and his article was really interesting. And then just having converse, offline conversations with like the likes of you guys, um, you know, full disclosure, we we hang out in Wananga <laughs> a lot offline. Um, but having conversations and, I, you know, I was having all these thoughts and I just like, because I'm doing doing study and I like write stuff, um, write some of the th things that I'm thinking about. And I just started writing a, about what was happening with Lord um, and how it was making me feel um and you know i have like, i'm not a total beginner with the real i live in my home in my home rohe i live under the maru of my maunga um, my marae is like 15 minutes down the the road so you know for someone who has that level of grounding um yeah to have a, a feeling of uncomfortableness about it uh, you know i was actually thinking of you know, we know in our networks of people who don't have those connections, who are searching for the, the real. Um, and I could see some of that pain and mumway that was coming through in some of the posts on social media. So I, I kind of uh, used some of that and talked to uh, it in a poem that I wrote. <laughs> um, and the poem address, like, addresses the conflict complexity of the issues and I think many of the nu nuances um, that were missed or that was missing in some of the narratives that were, were that were coming out on the on the social media um, and I really just wanted to kind of express that like it's complex our relationship with the real is complex because colonization um, 
our feelings are, about it are going to be complex and it's okay. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to validate that. And, you know, there was real issues that I was exploring around, um, you know, celebrity culture, the worshipping, the worshipping of white woman, whiteness, um, you know, commercialism, capitalism, all that kind of stuff that impacts on us and impacts on our real, um, the dismissing of us as Māori, the privileging of a white woman um, and how, it, it, you know, her journey was validated. But our own people who are struggling, um, you know, we know, we know those whānau um, who are struggling to, to engage again and reclaim their real. Um, yeah, I just felt aroha, really, aroha for them. Um, but emotional, really. And yeah, I just, um, like, I do want to mahi to Stacey, um, Stacey Morrison, I think, um, in, in terms of um, real champions, um, you know, she's a well-known one, but I think I've been really appreciative of some of the... Um, the conversations she's been having um, and the stuff that she's been putting out on her social media platforms that talks about her privilege, um, the privilege that she had to enable her to learn the real. She also talks to the pain of that journey. So, um, yeah, I just think she showed a level of empathy that I think has been missing from a lot of the, the, um, the things that our real experts and real champions have been posting out in the world and has caused a lot of my wife where I know. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where where I'm at. Um, but yeah, there's heaps of themes and, and other things in that to talk about. Yeah. Can you read um, what you wrote, Mance? Or do you want me to? Um, yeah, I can read it. Okay. Um, so I called it, Lord, oh, Lord, have mercy on our souls. And it's actually, this whole thing is actually not really about Lord. Um, and I think using Lord was a bit of a play on the idea of, you know, oh, Lord, the kind of the praising of the celebrity, um, but also sort of shouting out into the void about, you know, God, you know, this is actually really um, frustrating. It's causing a lot of harm. Um for relationships amongst our people. Um, yeah, so anyway, it's called, Oh Lord, um, have mercy on ourselves. So it goes, um, I'm not categorically against or for, it's not like I don't see the worth an internationally acclaimed artist singing in Te Reo Māori, the opportunity it's given to Hemi and Hana, the, creating wānanga, the creative wānanga process, the acknowledgement of their pūkinga, I understand it is significant. The impact this has for our rangatahi who grow up in the real, it does not go unnoticed. The project brings reach, a certain kind, a certain kind of value to our real, perhaps a value that we're not able to deliver, maybe never able to deliver for our position in this colonized land. And therein lies the mamai. It poses a question, what is the actual value we're talking about? The value of the real that runs through my whakapapa, my DNA, the real that flows through my veins, that was silenced, yet is slowly being rebirthed generation by generation. I have more than my mum when she was my age and my kids have more than me. I now know, or I know now, the ones who are now blessed, who are privileged to walk the paths hard uh, the past hard fought, fought for, laid down by grandparents and parents who struggled to rebuild the foundation of language within their homes. I know now how they see me. They see my paralysis as laziness. They see the knots in my stomach as an unwillingness. They see me as anti real Māori. How is this even possible? Because it has been said, Chair Stacey, that the real is in me, I am the real, and the real is me. I ponder when these folks enter into these projects, intentions solid, hearts pure, kaupapa driven, 
I wonder if the potential harm is ever contemplated. Undeniable, uh, unintentional, absolutely, but the trauma, the pain is there. Trauma is not our identity, but it is undeniably there. And as we heal, rebuilding piece by piece, I wonder what the fascination with white women is about. I wonder what their fascination is about. The saviorism, the paternalism, the I get benefit off your identity, your indigenous knowledge, but never have to ever bear the burden of being Māori, of being colonised, of experiencing the impacts of imperialism, exacerbated by capitalism and consumerism. It too was the binary that rolled out, the pitting against one another, the classic divide and rule stuff, the perfect colonial strategy plotting out before my eyes. And at the end of it, who wins? Whiteness wins. Whiteness is given a platform, defended, protected, gaining access into our world, extracting all the good juicy bits, while we are left to salvage the bare minimum that remains. O oh Lord, have mercy on ourselves. Whew, sorry, it's really hard to read <laughs> without getting a bit tongue-tied and a bit emotional, because it is emotional, eh? It really is, mm. because, um, you know, the real is us. It, it, and um, it feels like Lord's given it value. But <laughs> why can't we? Like, why can't we? Are we not valuable? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I And so when you wrote that, Obviously, there were many of us who are like, oh, we get it. And I guess um, people would view probably all of us as probably coming from what they perceive as a privileged background in regards to te reo Māori, right? They, they would assume, um, and some of the assumptions would be right in the sense that, yes, we all live very close to our marae, uh, or aside from Iri, who's up there taking it for the team of five million right now in Tamaki Makoto. Um, <laughs> show us your muscles, show us your muscles in. Uh, but you know, we have active bano, we are, act, we are all active um, in our hapu tanga, our iwi tanga, we all bear the responsibilities. Uh, we, we have all had to karanga at uh, different points of time in our life and we carry the responsibility. Uh, so there will be some who are thinking right now, looking at us, thinking, what are you even talking about? Like, you're more privileged than I. Uh, so we acknowledge that privilege that we ourselves sit in, in a sense. However, like you said in your, uh, in your poem, that you have more than your mother and your children have more than you, because that's what we do for our bit with te reo Māori, right? is that, and that's what your mother did, and that's what our grandparents maybe unwillingly did at the time. Uh, I I read an interview, two interviews that I did with my mom, uh, my dad and my auntie this morning on uh, Konia i Korero, and they spoke specifically to the difference in the uh, of treatment between them and Pākehā children as they were growing up the effects in the sense of not having their own deal. And then uh, my auntie's reclamation of her Māori identity and her real Māori at 83 years old, unbeknownst to her in a sense because she had started on her journey with dementia at that time. However, the first thing she went back to was her real Māori. Uh, so, so whether they know it, knew it or not at the time, they are contributing to our real Māori strategy within the whānau. Um, but your your poem also referencing uh, Stacey uh, Morrison and her different approach, because I think that's what we've spoken about the most, all of us, is the reaction, and I'm going to say reaction. I don't necessarily see it as a response. Um, some of the influences, I really feel like they couldn't, just they just couldn't quite understand where any of us were coming from, and so that that um, enacted a re reaction from them 
rather than a response. And we heard the your haters, but probably the one that got me the most was being anti te reo Māori. Um, basically, we are anti te reo Māori if we do not support and we do not agree with what had been done. We are anti te reo Māori and what have you done for te reo Māori? Well, let me list the list for you all. Uh, from a person who doesn't consider herself as a fluent te reo Māori speaker, who is, like Iri says, um, quite, oh, actually Mani and I have talked about this too, quite comfortable, not comfortable, uncomfortable with the fact that we will more than likely go to our graves not speaking te reo Māori how we would want to be speaking te reo Māori. Um, so Henenui, I wanted to ask a question to you because you're a musician and you guys have been gigging in te reo Māori before it was fashionable. Um, and I would say that you're in, in, a, in a province like this, in Taranaki, it's no easy feat. <laughs> um, and I don't want to take it away from any other musicians out there, but I don't know what your lived experience is like growing up anywhere else. I only know what mine is like here in little old Taranaki. Um, and she's a tough one when it comes to being Māori e te whanau. Uh, so, Henenui, I wanted to just ask you, from a musician's point of view, a Māori musician whose band only sang in te reo Māori, I believe all compositions were in te reo Māori, um, and the only of your only ones doing that at the time, right? Um, I think too. What's that been like seeing um, uh, seeing this sort of stuff? Not not because it's the Lord, but being advocates for te reo Māori in that Māori, uh, in that Māori music space within Taranaki and then um, seeing all of this resource and praise being poured into non-Māori. Yeah, I'll just say it straight up like that. Yeah, it was kind of confusing. So it brought up lots of emotions on both sides. Um, like Mani said, you can appreciate that there's been some effort to profile te reo Māori. So part of your, like, um, optimist side wants to wants to go, okay, it's more real, it's out there, it's in the public arena, like, and you're trying to think um, positively about it, but then your raw reaction is, man, it's hard being a Māori musician. It's It wasn't the flavour of the month at that time. Um for me, singing in te reo Māori was a feeling of connection to who I was as, as a wāine Māori. And a lot of our kaupapa of our waiata was around our taranakitanga and reclamation of our um, waiata tawhito and karakia and um, kōrero, kōrero pepeatanga. So it was trying to revitalise our taranakitanga. And for us within Taranaki, we know that's a big part of our identity that was taken from us. Um so for us, it felt like we were significantly contributing, not in an ego way, but like, oh, this is something that we need. We need to sing our songs. We need to revitalise our kōrero, our karakia. And, um, you know, if you, if people don't like it, I get that. But it felt important. So then when you see someone high profile, like Lord getting the who's who and like getting the full arsenal, it did feel a bit mamai, to be honest, because it's like, all this, um, and I get it because she is a high profile star, so that doesn't go unnoticed. But it was still like, what is this um, overloading of resource into this Pākehā woman who's contributed nothing to Te Reo, who's at the beginning of her journey, um, and all she all she brings, not not dismissing her and her talents at all, but on the face of it, all she brings is her profile and her audience. So to me, it felt like we were playing into making te reo palatable for Pākehā. That's what it felt like, because we were trying to respond to our reo Māori speakers and trying to, and making music that we love. Like, that's what music's about. You make music that you love. But it felt like this was a step around trying to gain more people, to have more exposure for te reo, but it was around making it a product for Pākehā, because I don't know, if many Māori listen to Lord, a lot of people that I don't know, I know don't, but that's not the point. There might be some rangatahi out there, so that's awesome. But her audience is international, and, and we've heard this, you know, she's opening the world's eyes to Māori. And it's like, uh, that's not her role. 
is that her role? And do we need her to do that? So it, I felt discomfort around um, trying to market um, products to Pakia because I've been in spaces where it's been acknowledged that um, Pakia hold um, social capital and they hold influence over decision making. And I'll bring up the example of Māori wards. And in that scenario, we knew that we needed Pākehā to vote for this decision if it was going to get passed at that time. So what did we need to do? We needed to create education and um, campaigns that would appeal to Pākehā, right? And as a Wa'ine Māori, knowing that I want to privilege Māori voices, having to create content for Pākehā was really uncomfortable for me because I don't want to put my effort over and above what I already do into making things palatable for Pākehā. It felt hugely discomfort, uh, uncomfortable. So when it came to this, I was just like, "Oh, I don't know if this is if, if this is a good thing." It just I I felt like a oh, this feels familiar. We're trying to appease to, and I'll say the word oppressors, and I don't mean that in in the way that people will think that these people are trying to oppress us. This is why we don't have real whanau ma because of colonialism, because it was taken from us. So this kind of um, trying to negotiate with them in terms of oh like Ariel so that you'll invest in us felt really uncomfortable for me just on that level and of course I would like to see um, if anyone was going to do a solo EP at fully in Reo to celebrate Reo Māori I'd like it to be a Māori artist and I'd like us to bring the full arsenal out for them and, and we have got Māori artists who do that but it just felt like wow she's really getting spotlighted and 30 other artists released songs this week. Um, and this kind of overshadowed that. So that felt uncomfortable as well. Queen Ataku. Tēnā koe mō whakaronui. I think of our Māori artists within Taranaki who will definitely have their whakaro on this. And like, like we're saying, this isn't actually about Lord. Um, she just happens to be the international artist who is taking our Māori music to the world. Kāpai koe hoki e Macy. She's been doing it for a little while now, Macy Rika. Um, but also but, hey. there were some there were some things in in um, her music as well. So her her new album has been translated. So it's her 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 product, you know. Um, and there are themes in the album that yes. talk about kind of exotifying indigenous cultures around sun worshipping, around say, the use of sage and the use of crystals. Yes. So there are themes in there, and bravo to the translators because they've been able to take those concepts and indigify them, indigenify them um, in an appropriate way. But the roots and that, that music, and I'm not, you know, do what you got to do, Lord. But I was like, oh, that feels uncomfortable too. <laughs> The fact that this album isn't even speaking to um, concepts of te ao Māori and that there has actually kind of some appropriation of other Indigenous cultures. So there are a few things in yeah. that that I just feel like when we tried to open up the wānanga and it got dismissed, it, it shut down that opportunity to be able to have a nuanced corridor around it. Um, and it felt like I don't want to say elitism because I don't want to characterise people as being elitist. But when you're told that you can't have an opinion that is different to audio experts. That doesn't feel very Māori to me as well, because all voices are important in conversations like this, and all perspectives are important, and that's a whakaro Māori. Um, and, of course, we support our rangatira and our um, reo exponents 100%, but that doesn't mean that we can't have our own whakaro and critique of the situation at the same time. Tēnākui. Iri, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, similar to what Hinenui, um spoke about and Mani, but I think if I can just just want to go back to Mani's poem because there's a couple of lines in there that I thought, yep, this is exactly how I feel, and it was they see my paralysis as laziness, they see my knots in my stomach as an unwillingness, they see me as anti the Māori. So that is the part that I felt reading some of those responses and having some of those responses directed at me about it but it, so you know that just described exactly how I am even when I'm amongst my own whānau 
and everyone is speaking Māori and I will reply in English. And it's it's mainly a, I don't, well, it's a bit of pressure that I put on myself because I never want to get anything wrong. So I always want to win. So there's, there's a bit of that that comes into it. But it's not, I'm not necessarily lazy, but I am paralysed by fear that I can't do that. For some reason, I it's not going to be good enough. And that might be um, an irrational thought, but it is my thought. <laughs> and that's this that those two three lines that Marnie wrote. I was like, that is exactly how I have felt through this whole thing. And I it's, I went and listened to Lord's music because I thought, oh, I shouldn't be saying anything. And it's not Lord's music that I'm against. So I think I did say in our little wānanga we had a couple of days ago, I like 16-year-old Lord and I like Royals. <laughs> not a fan of her more recent music, but I did like that one song because I liked the lyrics, right? And it was a catchy tune. I listened to, and I listened to the Te Reo, um, her Te Reo album, and um, of, of course the lyrics are going to be amazing in Te Reo because look who she had supporting her, you know, and capturing, being able to capture the concept her, that she wrote in Pākehā in Te Reo. Um, so they, you know, I, it's certainly my things aren't about anyone that helped her. My, my feelings have been around the respect Response or the reaction that um, has come when you might have voiced something different um, or about how we've felt about it. And you, and then that actually made me realise, and what made me realise there is no strategy for people like us, or for me, like me, is when our older sister, Kati, said to us today in a thread, um, oh, well, I'm not relying on on Lord to revitalize the deal. I got my own strategy. We've got our own strategies, and we're just carrying on with that, you know, sort of thing. But then I realized, yes, but where is the strategy? Where am I going to fit in this whole thing? And now, and part of it too is like, oh yeah, I got to take some responsibility for my own journey. But it doesn't help, and I and I think I'm feeling this for other people I've spoken to in a similar situation. It doesn't help when you get when you're made to feel that what you're feeling about this isn't valid. And this is my experience. I didn't you know, we're telling you to talk about this. We didn't have the deal in the house. We had some, but dad just didn't speak any of it. And mum me and mum actually started our journey at the same time. I was still at high school in Stratford and they started having real lessons um, at night time, and I had to go with mum so she had a friend, you know, to help her go. And um, so I had people, you know, um, Henerapa um, and Parata and um, Rido, um, you know, they were she, our kaiako back there. Oh, Henerapa, Henerapa, um, Aroha mai, and, and Linda. Um, and so they, I went because my mother made me go with her and be her friend. That's how long I have been on this journey. I have to say, I don't know if my deal has improved any or much from back then. I probably was better at it back then because I had to speak all the time. But, um, you know, it's, it's just I have been, I guess, a little bit taken aback by the responses because – and also my own response and reaction to it so I didn't realize for me uh the place I was actually sitting in until this happened and so and I was like shit yeah I, I maybe I've got a bit of work to do on myself maybe I am the old fuddy daddy that Hindi where he was you know referring to like <laughs> she said it's only the old fuddy daddies that can't get past I was like holy oh that might be me maybe that's me that they're talking about. And then I was like, no, I can't be. I'm not old. <laughs> and I ain't funny, daddy. But maybe it is. Maybe the Fakada was, yes, I am. Yes, I am that. Um, but it did make me think about where am I sitting on the spectrum of Te Reo, of, of this journey of Te Reo. And actually, I, I, that, that hurt a lot for me. I think, oh, 
I'm not as far down the track as I thought I was. And I've got, I got some. I've got some learning to do. Where do I go? What am I going to do about this? And if one more person tells me I'm anti deal, I will name and shame you. I'm telling you, no. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming, Fano. Um. So the you the use of the word trauma has been um, just flung around, and quite interesting considering the four of us in particular work in the world of trauma, <laughs> uh, trauma response, trauma reaction, uh, working with Bano, who, uh, um, yes, I mean, you cannot use a word like that and, and so freely and flippantly and gaslighty. I think that's probably, if I was going to try and explain how I feel about the situation, is that the amount of gaslighting that has been happening at a time where some of our whānau are already in a vulnerable state. We're going through a worldwide pandemic at te iwi. Um, to be gas, yeah, to be gaslit over the use of my reo or or the feeling that I'm now anti te reo Māori and a little bit lazy. Um, Mani, can you could you just break down some of these? Uh, human behaviours that we are seeing right now? Yeah, um, the dismissal of trauma um, was actually quite concerning for me. Um, yeah, and yeah, there was a lot of kōrero around just like, we're just going to get on with it and get over it. And then it kind of like, it, for me, it's like stirred up more emotions because I'm like, well, you know, not all our whānau have access to pathways of, to healing. Um, and real is a pathway to healing. So if you can't have the real, uh, you know, if you don't have access to the real, you don't have, yeah, it was just like messy. Um, and, yeah, I just think the kind of un Māori understandings around trauma were really missing. Um Actually, I'm going to do a bit of a plug. Um, can you see that? <laughs> so this is a really awesome publication from Te Atawhai o Te Ao, and I've just kind of I've been reading this as part of my my studies, um, and it's called Traditional Māori Understandings of Trauma and Wei Wing, um, written by um, Takiri Rangi Smith, who um, yeah. So this is a really beautiful publication. It's available online, and we could probably post it online um, in the comments. Um, yeah, but it just talks about um, trauma and where trauma manifests in the body, um, and it talks to the fact that the trauma is still happening. Yeah, this like it's not over. Like it's like historical trauma, yeah, that's that's part of our, the narrative, but tr the trauma is still, it's ongoing. Um, and I think just the things that have rolled out over the last few days <laughs> were a clear example of some of the harm that we were uh, continue, continuing to impose on our own people. Um, and that was yeah. really concerning for me, yeah. Have you got any kōrero to add to that, Hint? Yeah, I think the thing that I was saying in the narratives and agree wholeheartedly with Marnie was like that trauma is something that you can choose to put down. Um, and we hear this a lot in, um, you know, rhetoric around addiction, like it's a choice. Trauma isn't a choice. We didn't choose to be traumatised. We don't choose to actively... Um, could be continued to be live in a, a colonial settler state and sometimes I think oh is it even helpful to label it as trauma because you know incidents happened these things happened they were very real and I think when we dismiss trauma it's actually a very um, colonial thing to do it's a very it's a colonized way of um, looking at people's mamai patungako in Maikino, um, because for a long time, um, what happened within our whenua to our tupuna was denied. 
and we were labelled as rebels, as troublemakers, as in, in all of that history, like we've only just since now started to acknowledge the land wars. It's 2021. Was it this year or last year? That's very recent. So we have a long history where the trauma in this land, if you want to call it trauma, events, colonial rule, um, oppression, it's very real. So when you start to pick up that narrative of just lay your trauma down and trauma is a choice, that's a real colonial narrative because the way that we told our stories was through our real, was through our waiata, was through poi. That's our narrative. That's our that's our kōrero. And when you shut down our voice, you you make out like it's not there, like it's not real, and it is real. We've just heard Eddie talk about it. I've heard plenty of people talk about it. I have my own mamai around that, having been brought up with the reo and have, having a parent who brought me up in Kura Kaupapa at Kohanga reo, and then who um, didn't do that, follow that same journey for my son, for events that I don't need to go into and I don't need to justify to anyone because that's my my story. But it's mamai. It's very mamai because you have all these feelings of, did I do the right thing? Did I do enough? And you make it about you and your lack of... Um, you know, willingness to try or like, oh, and then when people say, oh, you're lazy, you're like, oh gosh, it's really, um, it's mamai. And we're supposed to be supportive of one another. We're supposed to be empathetic. Mana ki tanga, aroha ki te tangata, you know, listen, kōrero, herongoa te kōrero. And so when you shut it down and deny that these things are real for people, um, it's a, it's a colonised way of dealing with mamai to me, I think, yeah, you know, just like, oh, and um, that whole notion of privileges, you know, it's just because it's not an issue for you doesn't mean it's not an issue, that's privilege, so just because you don't have a problem with it, you think, oh, there's not a problem, it's like, okay, <laughs> so yeah, very, yeah. very, um, not, I just, not the goods, yeah. far, no. <laughs> I think there's been a real lack of empathy, eh? A real... I was um, shocked. Yeah, a real lack of empathy. Um, yeah, I don't know what else more to say. I was shocked because when it comes to issues of cultural appropriation, we hear these real exponents and we hear people go, nah, not good enough, can't, can't he? And it's like this really staunch vibe. And we're all like, yes, pai tine, because it has been a while since we've been doing that. And I think in the last kind of two years, you know, we've really got on um, being vocal about calling out cultural appropriation. So when this came up, and it was obviously like, tangata pākia, spearheading on kaupapa Māori, like, let's have a look at this. Everyone's like, no, no, you're anti-Māori. And it's like, what? <laughs> I just didn't get it. I was like, but you were just calling out so-and-so last week. <laughs> like, literally. That you called out and you wrote a big post on that guy the other week and you called out the lamb skin guy and <laughs> so like this is all, like what I didn't get it I really didn't get it and I, the the lack of empathy really I was like whoa really because I felt it like I instantly felt you know when I hear Eddie talk about her journey or when I hear my mates talk about their journey I'm just like oh fa ka aroha man. That, that really hits me, so I didn't understand it totally, man. So I was like a little bit like, hey, <laughs> what happened? Yeah, so you guys are quite thoughtful about your response. Straight away, I was like, well, don't be ringing me when you need someone to be down on the picket line with you because I'm not coming. <laughs> oh, I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no no no! Don't be ringing me when you want a land occupation to go down. Oh no no no! You're ringing the wrong person. I'm anti Te Reo Maori, actually. So uh, you know, and I'm a little bit lazy too. I ain't got time for that. Oh, I'm tied up. Up. Well, yeah, I'm washing my hair that weekend. Actually, um, so far, I know that's my sort of stick, sort of sense of humour that I have I as I'm a response, it. as a reaction to getting through. Uh, pandemics and traumatic historical trauma um, but no Eddie what was your yeah you had some Fakaro there too oh I was actually just gonna say I I do love some of the Māori artist songs on um, Waiata Anthems on this latest release so I've really enjoyed 
those um and of yeah, the lyrics in Lord's songs are they're beautiful. You know, there's no denying um Hemi and Hannah's talent and they should be celebrated for that. You know, like I'm not dissing anyone that had any um involvement with the whole project because I I love the Waiata anthems. Um but again, it's just this whole what you guys were saying, the lack of empathy and maybe I, I don't know if they expected they would get that response. I feel like when I've read them all, they all kind of thought, eh, but this is amazing. Look at the millions of people who are going to hear our deal, which I think is going to be awesome, a million people. But if I turn up in America, say, in two years' time, and somebody from there starts speaking te reo to me better than me, that's going to be, again, annoying for me. <laughs> that's going to be another layer on top of that. So... I would encourage our real experts to provide some strategy for, for those of us here, like the people that Mani spoke about who might not be able to access, who Hine Nui spoke about, who I spoke about. You know, we not all of us have the same level of access and we don't all have the same level of privilege. So when you're, um, de- you know, you're developing strategies for a large group of people who who aren't Māori to learn the deal and be um, allies and advocates for us. You can't do that without developing a strategy for Māori who want to learn and who who are Māori, <laughs> you know, first and foremost, who are actually Māori. Yeah. That's but, all but, I've got to say on this because yeah, telling you me I'm not allowed to swear. <laughs> Why we feel like we need to, and this is something that Martin Luther King talked about, was like you're trying to uh, appeal to the moral sense, um, a moral code of the power dynamics at play here. So you think that making things for Pākehā, for white people, and making them palatable will make them like it more, and then they're going to invest more in Tereo. And it's like, has that has that worked? <laughs> has that worked? So I just don't. I I kind of see the value in it, but I'm like, why do we need to? Why do Pakia need to sell Te Reo Māori to other Pakia? Um, because I'd rather see Ria do it. I'd rather see Macy do it, <laughs> and they are doing it. So I I understand the nuance there, but I'm just really uncomfortable with Pakia needing to be the the people who spread Te Reo Māori to the world. Like, do you yeah. think it's got something to do with like um uh oh gosh okay this is getting land warish but um you know we know here is it because we're Taranaki Uri we feel this way I don't know do you get what I mean like you talk we talk about how we express ourselves through poi uh through our karakia through all of those things I'm not saying others don't but we know that the land wars lasted here for like 40 years longer than everywhere else. And like, we're, it's fresher in a sense. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just feel well, like it on. was definitely my Taranaki um, Taha that came out. I don't know. I don't know why it felt like that for me and it wasn't my other side. Um, I just felt Because all really your Tarawa like, relations were celebrating it. That's why. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not can... supposed to be laughing. <laughs> I don't we can them, talk I about just it like that. Yeah. You just I think <laughs> in Taranaki, you know, and it's been well documented and not that we need the validation of the Waitangi Tribunal, but the Taranaki um experience is unique and it was ongoing. They called it you know, the, the everlasting war or the, the longest war, because we had basically forty years of military occupation like I'm not even 40 yet (laughs) so imagine your whole life having that colonial role um so it is a unique perspective that we have here within Taranaki and that definitely informs our skepticism around when we see these types of initiatives I think um and we don't have um a history where we um, didn't have all of our land completely taken from us in basically overnight. That is our experience. So when we do have these things, of course, it is. It's a trauma response. And is it a bad thing to be sceptical of these things? Or is it a natural thing? We're not, yeah, so this thing of just put your trauma down and just just move on, 
that is a colonial narrative. It just, you know, it happened. Move on. Heal. Heal yourself. Yeah, I'm healing myself, buddy, right now. <laughs> just heal and get over it and celebrate, Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm right now. I'm healing. I'm, I'm healing. healing myself right now. Mm, watch me. I feel it. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're right. Um, yeah. I, um, okay. I love the Māori journeys as well like that's yes. that from in the in the waiata anthems yeah but that's what i got the kick out of is seeing yeah, yeah. artists reconnecting to who our maori artists reconnecting to who they are like that was that was the beauty that's what gets you eh? Yeah, that's that's what gets me when i heard I kings far um, more out of it maori what's that i was like Kings, because I didn't realise that yeah. he was Maori, because he's a uh, Samoan artist, and I think is I think is I can't remember. Sorry, I don't have to. His name might be Samoan, so I didn't realise he was Maori. And when I heard that song, because I love that song, Ooh Ah, done into the Maori, I was like, Oh yeah, sorry, but it sounds better. And there were some funny lines in there, and I used them. I think he he came up with the word FOMO, but into the Maori, like W H. I had a Nakamoto FOMO and I was just like, <laughs> this is so cool. That must be so empowering for him to be a rapper and mm. rap in Te Reo Māori and feel a sense of pride in that. Because some of these songs, like Poor Te Reana, yeah. 100%, that's a main song, sounds 10 times better in Te Reo Māori. <laughs> so I totally yeah. feel you. I love hearing these Māori artists reconnect to Te Reo Māori and have their yeah. moment. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's so his good. name from Catch a Fire? Logan Bell? Mm. That, that I loved his journey, you know, him talking about like that song, 100%. I love it more in Te Reo, you know, because it kind of captures the I liked it in English anyway, but it mm. does capture the essence of what he was talking about his mum holding it down for everybody while he was on the road and his wife, and then mm. talking about his babies and things like that. I was like, oh, yeah, this is, mm. you know, and his reconnection journey as well. The, that those sorts of things resonated more with me than yeah. probably Stan any Stan Walker got married. Uh, yes. Like, exactly. I cried so hard in that. I was like, <laughs> 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 that should have been front page news. That song is stunning. stunning. Their whole love story, stunning. I wanted to see that celebrated everywhere. See, like, so <laughs> that's what actually tipped me. Because he had um, he had released his album, uh, and Shay Milne had released a rap album that he had made in his spare room, in his house, um, and I had watched the interview that he did with Kerama Kerama Wright on Aratoa. Oh gosh, Okaha, Okaha. sorry, um, Aratoa. Oh, that's Shay's and them's company, yeah. Um, on Okaha and his corridor about, you know, rapping in Te Reo Māori, which is not like rapping. And he took us through how he got there as even, and he also talked about, he paid reference during his corridor with Kiriama to the fact that, you know, growing up in South Auckland uh, during high school, it wasn't a cool time to be Māori. You know, so he had gone through primary school at Kura Māori, then gone on to high school, um, and I believe it wasn't a bilingual unit that he was in or anything like that. And then, you know, going into that next stage of life, going from Reo Māori, English, um, but always knowing, obviously, the whānau has to Reo Māori. Um, and then Kira was saying, oh, were you into iwi? And he was like, nah, it wasn't, it wasn't really cool, you know? It wasn't really that cool to be Māori then. And then him actually talking about the fact, you know, there's like people who can rap and then there's people who can speak Māori, but there's not many who can rap in te reo Māori and really call it rapping. Um, and then there's the others who are rapping in te reo Māori, I guess the nice way of putting it, uh, and how he's, he's unique. He's a unique artist because he can rap. He's, he can do this poll, this type of poll, in our language that actually not many others can do. Now, that to me is worth a front page story. I mean, you know, that to me, let's 
let's give this fella the props. He made it in his spare room, man. I mean, granted, he owns a media company, but that's beside the point. Um, what I'm saying is in, say, Kura Māori and that, he's he's an inspiration for our young kids. And, uh, hey, who are we to knock the young kids from seeing their inspiration? Now, if I said to my kids, who's Lord, they'd be like, hmm, not sure. To be fair, I did listen to her songs, and I did think her pronunciation was pretty good, man. You know? Yeah. I'm just saying, like, her, her pronunciation was... Props to her yeah. for that. Props to her. Absolutely. Yep. Um, pronunciation. I didn't... Re- songs didn't resonate with me. I was like, but I can see her doing this yep. at Coachella. <laughs> Go, and Mark Ruffalo <laughs> has yeah. already yes. tweeted about it. Yeah. Mm? Mark Ruffalo already tweeted about one of his songs saying how much he loved it. Yeah. So exactly. it's got the, I mean, it got, it's hit that platform. It but that concerns what they me too. To. Yeah. You know, I'm like, uh, I mean, yes, that, that it's hit the platform. Gatekeeping. Mm? Yes, it's hit the platform. And that was probably the aim. A. We know that she's not going to be the real Māori speaker. Um, the aim for them would have been for it to hit a uh, a worldwide audience. Now, I'll just quickly I know, just hold that thought that you had, Hints. Um, this time last year, almost to the very date, Hahana released a ad, I think you would call it, or an, a video. They had been um, they had yeah. received funding, yeah, a campaign uh, to put out a Te Reo Māori campaign, and they. Um, it was almost like reverse psychology, you know, when they were talking about it in their campaign, they were talking about the reason. To me, it was like a takeoff of all of the, the Karens in the world who tell us why we shouldn't like Te Reo Māori. Now, the Reo Māori exponents took exception to that. They really did not appreciate that campaign. Now, these young influencers, top 10 Māori influencers, I think they were dubbed at the time within Aotearoa, who have a reach of over millions. I mean, one of them alone has 3.4 million followers on TikTok. He's a dude who lives at home. <laughs> you know, he's he's got 3.4 million viewers, followers on his TikTok account. He is a global phenomenon, phenomenon in a sense, and so are his mates. Now, I'm not saying that I was down for what they did either, just exactly like this. But how can you say no to one and it's okay to another? You know, these were our own our own Māori um, people doing a job that they'd been charged with doing. Uh, no different to what's happening over here with Lord. Uh, they would have they would have more than likely got advice some from some people, maybe not this crew, but from some people, um, and boy, oh boy, there was no niceness or talk of leave your trauma at home through that campaign. All of the trauma came out. It was quite vicious and it was quite attacky, you know? I'm just saying, like, I can't help but feel like at this time, Stan Walker and Shane Milne, who don't need little old Tauringi Dylan sticking up for them um, in any sense of the word, but they put out their albums that were fully 100% resonate with so many of us. Um, barely any publicity, but more for Stan Walker. Obviously, he's Stan Walker. Um, and then, the, you know, you look back to a year ago, these young uh, influencers who, who had a platform to get a message out also, both controversial. However, our Māori... Our Māori people get slammed or barely publicised, and then here we are propping up these um, non-Māori people, the Pākehā people, who who really, they don't bear the responsibility that we bear. I know, it's my tissues for my issues right now, e Tefano. I'm not going to hold, <laughs> it is what it is, but do you get what I'm saying? Hey. Right. Someone chime in here, please. <laughs> There was um, some corridor around, you know, people not wanting the reo to flourish or go out into international audiences or being sceptical about its use, being gatekeepers. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think that's exactly what we're talking about now, which we're really intentional about our use of te reo and who has it and 
in the context in which they receive it, because I've been in spaces where Pākehā have corrected my deal or questioned my deal or told me that they can do this karakia because Auntie so-and-so said that they can actually open the hui with um, uh, karakia for kai because it's about flourishing and growing. So <laughs> when we talk about lived experiences, this is what happens. We're not we're not just going, oh, don't give Pākehā the real. Absolutely not. We know that it's a living language and then it needs to live. We're just voicing our concern about the way in which it goes out to the to, um to different audiences um, because these are people who are learning the real within classroom settings and they still don't have the nuance or don't have the understanding of the lived experience of being Māori. It's very different. So they're very literal when they apply te reo Māori or very black and white and you do this and so-and-so told me this, so I'm going to do that in kāroha because that's how they have received it. So when you you know you hear about it going out internationally, and I'm sure she'll perform it at some point and it's probably going to be at Coachella or wherever it is, and then people are going to start singing it and then it's going to go out, which is good. But how is that going to eventuate? Have we thought about the impact of that and um, where it's going to go? We can't control it. But, yeah, that, that could bring about another set of um, consequences. I'm not saying it's going to be bad, but it's unknown because it's a Pākehā person doing that. And it's her, her music now. But you know, given the, our, way our, given the way our haka um, has been used or abused and misused, you know, I don't have much hope, to be honest. Um, I think there's some real, real risks as well. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. There is. And so we're vo voicing those concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Have valid concerns. Yeah. They're not criticisms of our real exponents or a, not a yeah. willingness or a desire to see our real flourish. Yeah, exactly. That is not what we're saying here. What we're saying is yeah. there's some concerning factors. Yeah. The more you, Fakaru and Wananga, are about it. So let's have that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's that, mm. that um, lived experience thing. That lived experience thing. <laughs> That oh, lived experience tales, eh? <sighs> on the daily. Someone asked me what the Maori word of this at, at the Marae recently. Someone who's learning the deal asked me what the Maori word for pork is, and I was like, "Puaka," and she goes, "What about ham?" <laughs> and I was like, "Puaka, like get out of my face! I don't care." <laughs> Am I here to literally translate everything on this tepu? Is that what my role is? You know, it was that thing, what did Henny say? Um, I don't need to translate, you need to learn. But it was like, oh, gosh, it's really hard sometimes in spaces. And I was like, please don't let me have more of these things. And please don't let me have more of these interactions with people going, "How? What, is, what does this word mean? How do I say this? That's where my mind was going. My cynical self, sorry. It's me. Here I am. <laughs> What's ham? Um, what is ham? Do you know what ham is? Was... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Puaka? She was like, oh, that's pig. And I was like, oh, get out. <laughs> How do you <laughs> now, If you can um, tell me what ham is, Rick. I'll be further along in my real journey. Tēnā koe. <laughs> I would have said Puaka too. I think hey. I just told you it's hemi. No. <laughs> Yeah, we're bringing it to you one uh, one pig type of meat at a time, one pig momo yeah. at a time. Um, so now, okay, uh, just really quickly before we finish up. So um, in 2000 and Oh gosh, I'm going to say 18. It might have been 2017. So I can't quite remember the year exactly when I got my um, moko kawai. We went on a um, cruise to Fiji, right? When we got nice. back inland, the internet was going off about this Pākehā woman who had a moko kawai, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so everyone will probably remember about remember this. Yes. Anyway, we started having a conversation about this, you know, like it, oh, that's 
no, nah, man, that's not cool. And like, I was fresh. I had mine for like a whole two weeks or something. And I was feeling like I was on top of the world, you know? And um, yeah, someone said to me, what's the problem with it? And I was like, I beg your pardon? They're like, well, what, what's the problem with it? And I was like, and inside of me, uh, it's the same sort of response to what's happening now. Like, dude, do you know how much we have all had to get over to even get on that table, let alone be a youngish person, you know, I was like 37, man started the trend because she got hers for her, what were you, you her 40th, um, and so it was like the thing, okay, when we turned 40, oh, yep, man, he set the, the thing, that's mm. what we're all going to be doing. Um, anyway, so to get back on land and everybody was saying, Oh, oh, not everyone, but there was quite a few people who were like, it's okay, you know, da, 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 da. and I was like, man, we have to overcome so many things for us to accept that we can do these things ourselves, you know, and then for our own to say, man, just get over it, move with the times, man, you know, I'm like, well, no, because these responsibilities that come with every taonga uh, that we have within our culture, and uh, some people within our own culture know that that's not for them to carry. It's not their responsibility because they can't fulfill some of these responsibilities and we were never made to be able to do it all. Um, but, yeah, this th that's probably the response that I had initially was taking me back to the day we got off the boat and that, that story was like the biggest story and I was thinking, here we go again. You know, I can completely relate um, to what's going on here because it's like another thing where we are trying to get over or trying to move through. Uh, and I'm like you, Hans. I don't know if I like calling it trauma because I know that's actually a Pākehā word that's been given to us, like put on us, like you're traumatised, you're traumatised. Um, and I even don't know if mum I um, encapsulates it for me either, but there's some, there's a kapu out there right now. It's trauma because that's what they're bandying around. But yeah, I guess we have to really start to think about uh, our own actions and the re reaction to valid response. Is that right? When someone has a valid response about um, their own experience, which if you've experienced it, if you if you double information with experience, it becomes knowledge. So my own knowledge of the pathway that I am on at the moment and um, my own experience from being at the marae and being asked, what's pork and what's ham? Or, you know, being that person, can you do the karakia? Well, no, I can't because you called this hui, so you do the karakia. You know, all of those sorts of things, um, which – possibly doesn't happen for these uh, experts because I guess they probably don't roll in those spaces. Like, you know, they're out there probably just rolling into their Māori spaces all the time. I don't know. That's me stereotyping them. But that's anyway. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <nice>. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be yeah, awesome? That, um, oh, well, that's, so I'm going to leave. That, mm, sorry. Oh, no, well, I was just going to say everyone can have their parting shot, piao piao. Nah, not parting shot. Um, just leave your parting words and wisdom uh, with everyone. And Hinenui, we'll go to you first. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> probably all of us have been in spaces where, you know, the, the dominant whakaro discourse has been Pākehā. So we've all been in Pākehā spaces or worked in Pākehā organisations where you are the Māori person who's expected to fulfil the Māori roles. Um, and a lot of people think that that's a good thing, um, to, ha to have a Māori person in there to be able to um, make the organisation responsive and responsible to Māori. But it's actually, it's a huge burden. It's completely unrealistic to expect one person to be able to do that role and it's hugely taxing to be continually asked to be able to deliver. And there's a better way of doing it, um, and it needs to be resourced more. So when we are talking about these experiences, that's what it's informed by. So we're not just mm. hating on Pākehā, we're not hating on our te reo Māori um, experts in the mahi that we do. 
it's a very real thing for us and we continue to live in these spaces where there's huge expectations put on Māori and Pākehā spaces. So when we're disseminating our taonga audio, we need to be intentional about how we're doing that and need to be thoughtful about how it's going out and how it's going to impact on our, on our mm. whānau. But anyway, yeah, that was all. Thank you, Hins. And over to you, Amani. Passing words. Um, I don't know. I just, I suppose I just want to reiterate that, you know, um, that it's complex. It's, this, this issue is complex. It's nuanced um, because we're living in a colonised society. Colonisation is complex. Um, and we're going to have all sorts of feelings and that's okay. And um, yeah, I just felt like people needed reassuring that it's okay to have all the feelings. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of the stuff, there's some really like Annette Mori, Morihu. Is it Annette Morihu? That's her name. Um, yeah, lots of other people have been bringing out um, posts, talking to the nuances and, and just um, being in Wananga, really. And I just think, um, if anything, Lord has opened <laughs> up um, a space for us to Wananga with each other. And I hope that we continue to do that. And you yeah, like Kenny Nui said, just think about the harm. Um, whether, yeah, I know uh, probably a lot of it is un unintentional, but just you be mindful of that and have empathy and just know that we're not all, it's not a level playing field. We're not all coming from the same position um, and continue to be mindful of that. Um, you know, all those beautiful values of aroha and manaki, let's actually live them, <laughs> um, please, and put, put those kind of sentiments out on the, on the social media platforms as well. Yeah, Koina. And over to my tuakana. Well, I actually just can't stop laughing at the little message that's popped up uh, in our chat here. And Hinanui is just, anyway, for another time, that caught it all. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I'll, I think, Hinanui and Mani have, have both um, articulated, I think, what I was feeling the most around um, it's not a level playing field and, you know, need some more empathy out there around that and understanding. Because, you know, I look at the people who have been posting things about um, what have you done for the revitalize, ask yourself, what have you done to revitalize the deal and that kind of stuff. And they've all been really fortunate people who, you know, I was going to call them kids, but fortunate to have grown up with the deal and not had to, like it's, it, it, they're born into it because of all the hard work that their parents or their aunties or uncles or all those people did. And, you know, we sat in the room a few weeks ago at our cousin's 70th, who was part of um, the Rōpū who took the petition to Parliament. And that whole group were, was there. And there were Pākehā in there who were allies and did some hard work for that Rōpū. And they came, and they all, they're all speakers. But it was actually amazing to sit in there and think, oh, th these people are still alive. It wasn't that long ago. And there was a whole generation of kids, two or three generations of people there who were born from that. Um, and I, I realise that a lot of them won't have had the same, they definitely would not have had the same journey. I was too old, Kurikaipa wasn't around when I was younger. And I, my journey would have been totally different if it had have been, I'm sure. I'm sure it would have been. Um, I think we were fortunate we had a mother who was very, uh, a little bit ahead of her time in terms of making sure her kids, like you said, Marnie, you have more than your mother did and your kids have more than you. And that is me. I have more than my mother had, and my daughter definitely has more 
than what I, I will have. Um, and so, yeah, just leaving it out there too, just reaffirming what you guys have said around um, the care that we need to take with each other when we're posting that, even though inside I really just want to do a big one finger salute to all those people. I, you know, I've this has been very good for me to make me just reevaluate how I might be projecting out there too around in my own responses. Um, but that might come. That one finger salute might come at some stage uh, <laughs> if I'm feeling it. But yeah, and I did want to thank. Um, you Tiarangi for saying let's have one of these tonight and for Hine Nui and Mani and for Chance who wasn't here for really being able to um, allow our wānanga that we had offline because I feel like I felt a lot better after that eh? and so I think not everyone will have had that opportunity to do that either so he mihi tēnei hoki kia koutou Kau pai, ai rā i te whānau tēnā koutou katoa ko are are mai nei ki tēnei o ngā hōtaka o konia i kōrero ai rā ko te wiki o te reo Māori tēnei a nā reira kia kaha tātou ki te kōrero Māori ki ngā inga wā katoa ki ngā wahi katoa Kōrero Māori, speak whatever reo Māori you can and at 12 o'clock today there is a te reo Māori moment that we can all take part in uh, in whichever way uh, that we care to. Uh, nā reire i te whānau, ai rā, uh, kua nawhi tērā, mai i a mātou, tēnei o ngā pai, o uh, NTM, hashtag NTM, e te whānau, this is us, uh, over and out. Hei ko nei, hei ko nā, tūrou, hawaiki.